In this two-part video, we'll solve an ODE related to the velocity of a skydiver. In the last video, we drew the phase portrait and anticipated solution. We'll use them to confirm the numerical answer we'll obtain shortly. We have this first-order nonlinear ODE, which we'd like to solve via MATLAB's ODE45 function. Part C wants us to write a user-defined function to solve the ODE, then call it with various values of t open. Let's jump into MATLAB to do this. Here we are in MATLAB. I already typed out some parameters to save us some time. We have basic things like g and v0, then we have the two cd values, and down here we have the time vector and extra accuracy options for ODE45. Line 17 changes the relative and absolute error tolerances on ODE45. The default relative tolerance is 1e-3, and the default absolute tolerance is 1e-6, so I'm tightening the tolerances. We use the ODE set function as shown, then we're going to pass the options variable into the ODE45 function call. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so hopefully this will make better sense once we actually get there. The next part of the script calculates the actual steady state velocities. In the last video, we drew them qualitatively. Now let's plug in the values. Keeping the parachute closed results in a higher terminal velocity than if it's opened. This agrees with both common sense and the analysis we did in the last video. Now let's write a custom function which solves the ODE. I've written a user-defined function called Skydiver. It accepts 7 inputs and returns v, the skydiver's velocity. Make sure you read the function's documentation to understand what each input and output represents. Before we issue the ODE45 function call, we need to deal with the changing drag coefficient. From t equals 0 to t equals t open, the drag coefficient is 0.25 kg per meter. From t open onwards, the drag coefficient is 5 kg per meter. We can express this using the heaviside step function. This anonymous function represents the drag coefficient over time. When t is less than t open, this heavy side returns 1, and this heavy side returns 0, so the cd closed value is just multiplied by 1. But this heavy side value becomes 0, so we nullify the cd open over here. When t is greater than t open, the opposite occurs. Both of these heavy sides will return 1, so the parenthetical term becomes 0, and we nullify the cd close value. This heavy side term equals 1, so we just keep the cd open value here. Let's plot this to see if it works. We can see that the drag coefficient is 0.25 kg per meter until t open equals 15 seconds, then it jumps up to 5 kg per meter. This is how we can express the drag coefficient using the heaviside step function. Whenever you see something being expressed as a piecewise function, you should immediately think of expressing it in terms of the heaviside function. Now we can continue writing the skydiver function. I wrote the dvdt function, which is a function of t and v. It calls the cd anonymous function from above. Then, I fed the dvdt function into the ode45 function call. ode45 gives two outputs, the time vector and the solution vector. We supply the whole time vector to the ode45 function call, so we don't need this output time vector because it's just going to be the same thing as the t vector we supply it. We also added the options argument to enhance the algorithm's accuracy. Now that we've written the custom function, we can go back to the main part of the script to repeatedly call this function for the various t open values we're given. Thank you. 
Here I have a vector storing the various t open values. I made a matrix called vt, which holds the velocities for each case of t open in a separate column. Let's write a for loop to iterate through each value of t open vec. In each iteration, we'll call the skydiver function and solve the ODE. We call the skydiver function using the current value of t open vec, then store the velocity in the ith column within the vt matrix. The plot gives us some pretty cool results. We can see that the velocity in each curve starts at zero, which is our initial condition. If your solution doesn't start at the initial condition, it's wrong, no matter how fancy your plot or code is. This is one of the easiest checks you can do. Each curve quickly rises, then suddenly drops once t open is attained. The velocity then settles over time. As t open increases, the sudden drop shifts further and further to the right, which hopefully makes sense. Notice how each curve looks like it's initially approaching 55 meters per second. This is especially apparent in the green curve. It looks like they're approaching 55 because that's just about the steady state velocity when the chute is closed. Upon reaching t open, the velocity seemed to approach just around 12 meters per second which corresponds to the steady state velocity when the chute is open. If we compare this figure to our hand-drawn anticipated solution from the last video, we see it's a pretty close match. This means our code is probably pretty accurate, but that's not a guarantee. Each sudden drop-off looks pretty crisp, which is the result of the extra accuracy we supply to the ODE45 function. If we didn't change the absolute and relative tolerances, the graphs would appear more rounded at the drop-off point due to the discontinuity at t open. You can see how loosening the tolerances induces some weird behavior at each t open value. If you zoom in after each value of t open, the velocity oscillates a little bit as well. I'm going to restore the accuracy to what's specified in the problem statement. We just saw how the velocity is affected when we change the value of t open. Now let's investigate what happens when we fix t open and gradually increase the skydiver's mass. From our phase portrait, we know that the steady state velocity is proportional to the mass, so if the mass increases, the steady state velocity increases as well. Since t open is constant, all the curves will drop off at the same point, and they'll all converge to the smaller steady state velocity just as we saw in the first figure. We're going to employ a similar problem solving process as the last part. We'll use a for loop to iterate through each value of m, then call the skydiver function. Just as before, I declared a variable storing the m values and a separate matrix storing the velocities corresponding to each mass in a separate column. Now let's write the for loop. This plot looks decently similar to the first one. The velocity at t equals zero is zero once again, which is good. As we increase the mass, the curves look like they want to stabilize at an increasingly higher vss, but at t open, the velocities drop, and then they approach the smaller of the two v steady states. In the first figure, the smaller vss was constant, but now we have four different small vss cases because the masses will influence each steady state velocity. This concludes the skydiver problem. To start, we drew the phase portrait and anticipated solution of a first order nonlinear ODE. Before we solved it in MATLAB, we constructed an anonymous function using the Heaviside function to control the drag coefficient over time. We performed a parameter study on the time at which the parachute opens and the skydiver's mass. 
we used the phase portrait and anticipated solutions we hand sketched to help us confirm our numerical solutions. I hope this gave you a better glimpse into how we can leverage phase portraits to understand the physics behind a problem we don't know much about, and also how to solve ODEs in MATLAB using ODE45 with heightened accuracy options. See you next time.